those of you just starting to paint, these little small paintings are an ideal way to learn. You're not making a painting and you can do two or three, four, five, yeah, as many as you can. Um, do one, next one, make it better. You've learned from it. Next one, make it better still. You've learned from that. It's a practice painting. Hey guys, if you're going to spend £160 on a canvas, you do not want to be running the risk of it not being quite the right colours. So you don't want to be messing around, wasting your time doing it. So it's a good way to learn how to improve your techniques. And it familiarises yourself with your image so that you'll go, ah, oh, yeah, remember that. That was a bit tricky last time. OK, or this is how I did that or, or whatever it is. But it, I can't begin to stress enough the benefit of the freedom it gives you to just go and have some fun. I don't have to worry about am I getting it right. We did these couple of test paintings where you can see I think this one was done first and then this one second to try to get a balance and a feel for the painting. We're going to adjust this painting. This is basically a beginning of a painting which I started quite a few years ago. And I just wasn't happy with the way this bottom section was going. So this is more to the tune or the thought which I would want it to be. If you've got a painting at home which is like this, years old, didn't go as well as you'd hoped, then this is going to be one way of doing it. These are shapes of light and dark. And again, if you have a Go to the sea, get a camera, take some photos of the waves crashing. You will be amazed at the dark um, values that you will be seeing on the coming off of these waves. And also the way the, the shapes are vertical. They're not horizontal and they're not in a pattern. There's real energy in them and... and power and shapes, and, and that's really what you want to be doing. A lot easier to work from a photo, but hey, it's nice to have a challenge. Again, observation, go to the seafront, have a look at the waves, see what they do. Um, yeah, it's, it's like we, we speak of anatomy and if you're doing a portrait or a figurative painting, then um, some knowledge of human anatomy is really useful um, to know where the jaws are, the dips in the top of the head, this sort of thing. Well, same with waves. There's an anatomy of a wave here, and it, it's good to uh, understand what's going on. So... What we've done here is the crest. It's a crest of the wave coming up. And this is deep water. Because I'm looking at through at this, I see through into the water rather than there is a reflection, but it's not the bright sky. It's therefore a darker colour. Now, the um, trough of a wave, which is the flat bit, you'd see down here, this is flat, it looks like a mirror. So it light coming, as you look at it, light coming in ricochets off like this at the same angle, just like the trough, uh, crest. So dark, a little lighter, light, sky colour. And then you've got the wave that comes over. Now this is a body of water. If you imagine it like this, it rises up and then it kind of curves over like this. Well, of course, the thin bit has got the sunlight coming through it. So it's lighter. That's what we've got to try and do now. You can use different colours, like I'm using here. Very slight variations, stripe at a time and blend it that way, which takes longer to do, but you get more control. 
and you're less likely to lose the intensity of the colour of the chroma. The other way of doing it is you get a soft brush and you just very carefully soften the edge of these colours that you're putting in. So you put the bands in and then you soften between each colour. The other way of doing it is that you, uh, you don't do it. You leave it as a painting, as a brush mark. Ooh, scary. And that really works well too. So there's a decision to be made as to how to paint things like this and all your paintings. Do you want every brush mark showing? Very excitable and quite... It's quite an in-demand um, technique because people wanted a photograph. They go and buy one to hang on the wall. So people who buy a painting don't want a photograph. They want a painting. So they don't mind seeing a brush mark. Does that make sense? Good.